right. I'm going to go and share my screen. I think I'm live. Okay. Yep, I'm live. Uh, so uh, the first thing is a very, very uh, good evening to everyone. So uh, let me know if you can hear my voice and uh, if you can see my screen. So let us see that if everybody can hear my voice, if you can see my screen. And today's topic is all around JWT token. So today we're going to go and talk about what exactly is the JWT token and how to implement it on the MVC core uh, application, right? So if you can hear my voice, please do give me a signal saying that, yes, you can hear my voice. You can see my screen. Uh, and uh, so today what we will do is, you know, we will we'll create a simple ASP.NET core application. We will see what are the different things we need, you know, in order to create a JWT token, you know, like we need some algorithms, we need a secret key, uh, we need claims, right? So what exactly we need, right? And then we will see that how to plug that JWT token inside the middleware pipeline, right? So very, very good evening to everyone. I can see, yeah, Baisaki, good evening. And uh, Kiran, Vidya Sagar, Kishore, Venkata Raman, Mohana Kumar. Uh, so a very good evening. So very quickly, you know, just... Uh, uh, you know, to start with, you know, to give a context here, I'm going to go and uh, resume my screen share. So what exactly is this JWT token? You know? So I'm going to just go and explain this. Uh, JWT token is token-based authentication. So if you see this token-based authentication uh, fundamental has been around for a long time. Uh, even on our, in our real life also, you know, we do a lot of token-based authentication. For example, if you're going to watch a movie, what you do is that you first go and you swipe your credit card, you pay the money. And after that, that they give you a token or you can say a ticket and you take that ticket and you can go into, into the movie hall, roam free, right? And so on. And if anybody wants to validate that you are, you have bought the ticket or not, right? They will just go and validate the ticket. So the point of ticket-based authentication is the following. So here is your client. It can be the browser. It can be the, it can be a JavaScript application. It can be, on Angular, React, or whatever, right? So there is a client out here, and you have your server. So first what happens is the client sends in the user ID and password. And the server goes and generates a token and give it to the client. And then later on, whatever interactions client does through the server, he will always send the token to say that I am a valid user. Right. So after that, you know, the client, whatever interaction he does with the server, he will only send the token and he will not send the password again and again. That's the basic goal of uh, JWT token. The, the goal is that you just send the username and password once the server validates it. He generates a token and the client, you know, in every request will later then send the token. Now the question which comes, which can come to your mind is, so how do I generate this token? Like, so how how does this is token generated? Should I use some custom algorithm, right? Or is you know are there some standard algorithm out there which can generate the token for me, right? So first thing, a, a very important uh, thing here, do not use custom algorithm. Do not think that you are, you are the smartest developer of the world, where you can say that I will develop some custom, you know, where I will put the company name. I will put, you know, the name of that person. I will put something. I will shuffle the alphabets out here. Then I will apply a GUID. Don't do that. You will be guessed one day, right? Use, you know, a time-proven algorithm like HMAC, SHA, DES, PES. You know, all these algorithms are very much proven. So just use one of them, right? So now, uh, so let us, and, and any questions, guys, please put down on the chat. I will come to the chat like after 10, 15 minutes. So when I explain a concept, I will come back to the chats out there. So, so, with, so this is token-based authentication. So now the, the biggest question is that, how do we generate this token using ASP.NET MVC code, right? So we understood that, yes, we need to go and generate the token out there, but how do we generate it? What are the things needed to generate token, right? The first thing is you will need some kind of a data, right? So like, for example, 
this token is generated once the user is validated from the database. So first thing, the validation happens, right? So if you look at the flow, first, the user will be checked in the database. In other words, you will do the authentication and then you will go to generate the token, right? So the first thing what it will definitely need is it will need the username, right? Some kind of a username, you know, on which you will generate the token. Now, um, okay, let me draw this diagram in a different way. So the first thing is to generate this token, <clears throat> right? You, you will first go and you will validate that user from the database. You will say that he is a valid user or not. If he is a valid user, yes, you will take this username, right? And you will pass it to an algorithm. So some kind of a standard algorithm out there, which, uh, you know, which can be DES, PES, or like, you know, the one which is used nowadays a lot is HMAC, right? So the first input, what you need out here is a kind of a username or kind of a, some kind of an identification, you know, which will be tokenized, right? The second, what you need out here is an algorithm, right? Now, definitely this user will also have roles. So like he is an admin, he has access to these buttons or, you know, he has access to the navigation menu and so on. So that means that this user roles also, you would like to give it to the algorithm and say that, can you make those user roles also as a part of the token so that the token has both the information. It has the authentication information. Authentication information means, uh, you know, it, it says that this user is existing in the database or not. So that information and also the authorization information saying that, you know, this user has, you know, it's an admin and, you know, he's a super user or whatever, right? So we also need the role. So while you validate the user, you will also like to go and provide him the roles. Now, normally when you talk about JWT token, then people don't talk, don't, say roles, you know, they say claims. So must be, I'll just stick to that vocabulary claims. So claims means, you know, this user claims that he is an admin. This user claims that, um, you know, he has access to certain files, certain reports, certain menus, right? So claims. So the, the third thing, you know, what you need out here is the claims. This claims, you know, you can pull it, you know, while you do the authentication process. Okay, <clears throat> great. Um, I'm just trying to put, you know, forward that what kind of things we need to generate the token. Okay. Uh, the next thing what we need is we need a key, right? We also need a key out there. Uh, let me just go and check if something a problem, right? So yeah, we'll need a key out there. I'll come to all the questions if you don't worry. Okay. Just put down the questions, right? You will also need a key. Now you'd be asking that why do I need a key, a secret key? I will say that a secret key, or you can say a salt, you know, by which this can be tokenized. So that is the fourth thing what we need. So you'd be asking that, why do I need a key, right? We already have the algorithm. Now, you know, now let us say that you have, you have an algorithm. For example, think about that you have created an algorithm. That algorithm is following. You know, I, I'm just talking about that, why do we need a key? I'm trying to stress the point that why a key is needed with the algorithm. Now, let us say you have created an encryption algorithm where you say that one will be two and two will be three and three will be four, assume. So if you want to encrypt one, two, three, you have, you have an algorithm, the simplest one in the world, you are just adding one to it, right? Now, if somebody gets hold of this algorithm, right? He can easily decrypt your data back, right? So what you can do is that, I'm not saying that this is a very strong way of doing things, but I'm saying that you add a key, you will say that, okay, increment by what number? So you will say that key is equal to 10. So that means that you'll say, okay, like one, so one becomes 11, and two becomes 12 and three becomes 13. Now, until the person does not know this key, it would be a bit difficult for him to guess, you know, what is this, right? So algorithm plus key is needed, you know, to make your uh, things much, much stronger, right? So that's why you need a key because HMAC, everyone knows how it works. It's there as an RFC, SHA, everyone knows, DES, everyone knows, passive. So these algorithms, is, is like on the web, you know, it is on the public domain, people know about it, right? But what is the differentiator is this key and ensure that you store this key in a very secure location, like a key vault or somewhere, right? So that is the fourth thing you need, right? And you also need one more thing, the fifth thing, you know, which uh, I don't know what name to give out there, but you need things like 
when will this token expire like for example will it expire in an hour is it meant for a single computer is it meant for a multiple computer and who is the who is the creator of this token you know who is the issuer of this token and so on right so you also need this fifth point out here uh, you know which are some extra things right to the algorithm right so you need five things you need five things to generate your token right uh, one you need some data the user name it can be a user id it can be an employee id whatever right you need the claims the roles you need an algorithm you need to choose like hmac or sha or whatever you need a secret key you need you know i'll say like ancillary things like expiry and you know uh, who has created it and so on right <clears throat> and then you can generate the token now why do people say it has a jwt token well because you know when this token gets passed you know to the client it gets it gets passed in json so that's why people say it is a jwt token but at the end of the day this is token based authentication token based authentication is not something new it is it has been existing from years together for example if you are coming from this old asp.net web uh, web form family or even if you go to the old days right old days means like i'll say 90s also right 2000 programming at that time we had this forms authentication if you remember at that time also tickets were tickets were generated if you ever remember you know you had those auth key and so on so tickets are generated you know from like 20 years back from now okay uh, so the this is not something new but only thing is that uh, we are now getting more standardized in terms of communication i will also be talking about that why do people call the token as bearer token so a lot of people say jwt bearer right so what exactly that means right okay so to start with these are the five things you need to generate a token right so what i'm going to do now is i will go back out here you know and i will go back to this asp.net core application so you can see here i have a very simple asp.net core application which i've created i'm going to go and just increase the display setting you know just if you can probably the fonts are not looking bigger i'm going to go and go and come to the questions guys please put down your questions i will i will give 10 minutes in between for the questions right uh so i'll keep coming in between so here it is asp.net core application simple one i have taken the basic template in case you are new to asp.net core please go to our website we have the asp.net core tutorials in case you are new to dotnet right this is a kind of an higher level class you know which we have taken today so in case you are new to all these fundamentals please go ahead and uh have a look at our uh you know trainings internally and very quickly you know like uh, this jwt token i had taken in this previous thursday so we have this mvc core class you know which is going on for almost like 12 13 lectures we have finished now so we have done the jwt token on the server and then we want to integrate with the client right so there also we are doing all these trainings out there you can go and visit our site questpond.com so here it is this is our home controller out here and um, let us do like this this home controller if if i run this at this moment what will happen is <clears throat> it will just go and show me the home controller right it will it will just just go ahead and show me the home page because this is the default mvc core application so very quickly i am running this mvc core application now what i want to do is that i want to say that you cannot access this home page until you don't give a token so if you see at this moment there are there is no authentication there is no authorization there is no ticket nothing right so if i do an f5 it will just go and start this website out here and show me the home page the default home page of asp.net core i am extremely sorry for the slowness of the browser out there but there it is the welcome page right so nothing no security nothing and let us try to put jwt token on the top of it right so what we'll do is we'll go ahead and we'll create a new security controller so this security controller out here is responsible to generate our token right <clears throat> so i'm going to just create a simple api controller again if you're new to new new to mvc core please go and watch our videos out there uh please do the basic training so in case if this is heavy on the head i'm extremely sorry for that so security controller so that's a security controller and this security controller will help us to generate the token right now i'm going to go and uh just cut paste this basic code out here so i'm going to go and just show you how the basic code looks like so i'm going to go and copy this code right out here and explain you so 
remember five things before I show you the code out there, five things we discussed. We need the name, we need the algorithm, and we need, uh, and on. so you can see here, uh, the, the, there is this method out here, generate JWT token, right? And uh, you can see a lot of things are read here. Don't worry about it. You know, we'll fix it. Okay. But let us see that those five things in this code, this is the code of generating the token. So we have this MVC JWT token uh, package, which we have to reference. Once we reference the package, you know, all of these red signs will go off, right? So let me do, let me do like this. Let me first go and reference the package out there. So I'm going to go to the nugget packages and very quickly I'll go and I will reference over here, the JWT token. <coughs> yeah. So all the magic is done by this ready-made package out here. Now, now please remember that uh, do not take the .NET framework one JWT, take this one ASP.NET Core. In case you are doing the new ASP.NET Core, ensure you select the ASP.NET Core authentication JWT bearer. Don't worry, I'll talk about the JWT bearer, right? Ensure that your .NET Core version matches with the JWT Core uh, MVC Core version. This is 3.17 uh, and your project also should match. So let me just quickly check it so that uh, I don't make any mistakes. So I'll just go to the properties and just make sure that at least I am in the 3.1x version. So I am in the 3.1x version. So this is a compatible thing. I can just go and install it, right? <clears throat> so this is what it is. So this package will help us to go and fix those red errors, you know, what we see out here. So I'm going to go very quickly and use the automatic uh, IntelliSense out here, uh, which can help us to fix those things. So you can see here, uh, the, the, the symmetric key security comes from here. The claims also comes from here. I'll just explain this code again, you know. So just want to see that all these red signs goes, go, goes off because with those red signs out there, you just get demotivated to see the code, right? So there it is, <coughs> right? So that is the code out there. I'm going to go and do a snip, a very quickly a snip. And let me just be focused on this code. And let me just explain you what exactly this code is. So where is this, right? So let me just make it smaller and just let's focus only on this part of the code, right? So five things, five things I discussed about <clears throat> right, so the first one, okay. So let me start with the first one. The first one, what you need is the algorithm. You can see here, I am passing here HMAC SHA-256. So this is the algorithm. That is the first thing in this code. The second thing you know, we said is that we need a key. So you can see at this moment, I know that the key is hard coded. This key has to be stored somewhere in a secure, secured location. But because we are learning for the first time, I'm just putting the key out here. So this is that key, you can say the salt, right? Uh, which will be used to generate the token, right? <clears throat> Second, I talked about, you know, roles and claims. So you can see here, this is the claims. Now this will normally be filled from the database. So this, this at this moment is hard coded. And remember, huh, this method will only be called once the user has been checked into the database. Once the user has been checked, then only this method will be called or else you will send him a 401 unauthorized exception or something, you know? So this is the third thing you can see here, the roles, the claims, right? And this has to be filled uh, from the database as far as possible, right? Um, so this is one, this is one. And uh, as I've told that we also need uh, things like, you know, expiry date, right? So you can see here, uh, this is an expiry date. Uh, the issuer at this point, I just put ship ship everywhere, right? but the issuer who created it, right? Uh, you know, then for whom it is created and so on, right? So again, we need this uh, uh, fourth thing out here, uh, which is this. And remember the fifth thing we need is the data on which we will do, uh, we will do the encryption or we'll create the token, right? So we do need the username at least to start with, right? So one, two, three, four, five, there it is. And then finally you can go ahead and you can just go and say, write token and this token will be generated, right? So very quickly, uh, there are there are three main classes you need to understand over here, right? So, uh, uh, well, there are four main classes, but uh, three to start with, and then the fourth one is just a writer. 
So this first one is the security key, which actually this, this class actually takes the security key. The second one is sign-in credentials. The sign-in credentials is nothing but it is security key plus the algorithm, right? And then is the claims class, right? The collection of claims. Then we need the security token, you know, which takes the key, it takes the claims, it takes the all this and does the thing. So that is the final uh, JWT security token class to get the things done. And finally, you can go and you can write the token, right? So these are, uh, you know, the five things needed out here. <clears throat> now, what we will do is let us go ahead and quickly go and see how does the token look like, right? So we have copy pasted it uh, and uh, let us go and just try to execute this in the get method. So in the get method, what I will do is uh, we have this get method out here. Uh, let's remove one of the get, met get methods. So I'll just go and hit the get and let us try to invoke this function out here, generate JSON web token. Uh, I would admit that I've taken this code from the internet. So it's, it's not that this code is written by me. If you go and Google around, it's a very, very standard code you will find on the internet, right? But I've just explained you what exactly it is. So you can see this get method. Let us go and also see the structure of the token. So that is the get method out here, return. Uh, there is no argument, yeah. So over here, I'll just give the username as shiv123. So that is a username, right? You need a username. So let me go and run this and let us see that how the structure of JWT token looks like. So once I show the JWT token, I'm coming to the chat window out there to see the questions. So it's going to be like almost 20 minutes of talk out here. So I want to interact with you guys. So once I show you the token generated, I will come to the chat. I will, I, we will see, you know, what kind of questions we have out there and uh, we'll try to answer them. So I'm going to go and say API slash security, right? That is a get, I'll invoke it. Oh, uh, security, what is that? Security, something wrong out there. Something has gone wrong. What is 405? Uh, 405 exception, what is it? I'm not sure. So 405 says that method not allowed. Okay, isn't it my get method allowed? Let us go and quickly check this. This is our get method, right? And uh, it is there. But yes, I don't really, uh, let, let me do this. Let me remove all this. It's just simple HTTP get. So it must be, that's what the error is. So I've just removed everything and just made a simple get out there. Whenever you get this, like, you know, things like uh, this method is not found unauthorized or something, Somewhere, you know, the method names can be a problem, right? So let me go and run this again. <clears throat> API slash security, and let's see. Okay, wow, so there is the token. There is the token, what you can see out there, which is generated. We can just copy this token on the notepad, and that is the token, right? Now, before I go and discuss the structure of this token, if you see at this moment, the token does have a structure out here. But before I go to the structure out there and discuss these three different structures, you can see here, there are three things in this JWT token. But before that, I want to go to the chat window out there and see for the questions, right? So I'm going to go to the chat window out there and I will start seeing the questions. I'm sure that a lot of questions would have come till now. Okay. Uh, right, so let me start from the top. Yes, we can hear you. Yep. All that is done. Hi, sir. You are the best. Thank you, Navid. Thank you very much. Uh, 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 can token be stolen by someone from the browser local storage and also a fiddler? And how's the client side secure? I think this is a very good question from Santosh Kumar B out there. And I will take this question out here that can the client side be, be secured? So here is a question from Santosh Kumar. And let me just talk about it. Can token be stolen from the browser local storage? Obviously, if your computer is given access to someone, he can get the token. Think about it. If, if you have a ticket, if you get a ticket from of a movie, and if you give it to your friend, right, he can go and watch the ticket right on your name, isn't it? So if the ticket is gone, everything is gone. This is termed as session hijacking, ticket hijacking, JWT hijacking. Hijacking means he has got the hold of your token. He has got the hold of this, this value. He has got the whole hold of this value. But, but one thing you need to know that how can he get the hold of this value? It is difficult, right? It is not that it is not impossible. 
it is difficult i'm just saying first thing to to get hold of this value he has to get hold of your computer so if if that is stored somewhere even in a local storage or in a cookie right he has to get access to this right yes there are ways of also stealing the cookie and so on that's a very different thing but the first thing is he has to get access to the computer right second if you use ssl the man in the middle middle attack almost becomes nil right so <clears throat> very quickly which are the places you know from which this this token can be hijacked or it can be stolen right so let us talk about it so one is that he has to access your physical computer right so if you are lame enough to give him the access he will he will definitely take advantage of it right so one is the end user's computer right out there right inside this it can be stored in a cookie it can be stored in a uh, in a local storage or it can be stored in a memory right if he has access to this yes it will happen but there is one more place you know from where somebody can sniff it like let's say if, if he is in the office network some smart guy out there can use a fiddler as as you said santosh and do it but then if you put an ssl out there this is almost like not possible right and then you have the server side code so you can you can go and you can put ssl and you can go and you can uh, ensure that your computer is not just given to everyone now it is possible that session hijacking still happens still for some reason somebody gets hold of it of, of the session right so what you can do is that when he sends you a token so let us say now this is this is user out here he he gives the username and password and he, he generates a token for him right now let us say somebody gets hold of this token and there is an another guy out here and he tries to use this token and he tries to send a request to the server now the server is fooled the server thinks that this guy is this guy but they are different right so what you can do is that you can take you can add some more information for example you will say that this token was generated for a person who logged in from mumbai india his browser was chrome he uh he came from this latitude and longitude so what you can do is that with the token you can also go and check is he the same person you know is he having some the same environment so with that what will happen is with token based authentication you can be guaranteed saying that okay this is the person whom i given the token and this is the person who it is so you can check for some extra environmental information and you can try to avoid this session hijacking today it is very difficult to cover those kind of scenarios but yes so answering your question can token be stolen from the browser local storage absolutely not only from the browser from a cookie and also from the fiddler but the fiddler one the man in the middle attack fiddler means you are talking about sniffing the data in between so that can be avoided really by um putting an ssl ssl that's why a lot of people say ssl is needed right and how is the client secured the client is not really secured you know it's open so only thing is you can secure your server right so that's that's the answer for that let, let's go again back to the next question i'll be taking some more questions please put down your questions out there so let me see the next question out there so i'm going to go and check uh <clears throat> uh from mohana kumar username and roles not primary id uh username only you need or you need some unique identification mohana kumar on which you want to do the token generation right uh not really the primary id i, I probably did not follow that question you know hi uh, i shiva sir can we integrate digital signature with this token yes you can integrate digital signature with this token but then you have to write something custom about it so you just need to put something more custom about it uh no the owin also is so uh, there's a question here from khanna sir sir is owin based on authentication work differently no it's the same thing actually at the end of the day owin o or these are protocols and the token you know it can be a jwt token it can be any other token right so don't compare this protocols with the token please understand o in o auth all these are protocols out there so don't compare those are you know the handshaking mechanisms of how the security will happen token is one part of it so token is a very smallest part of the security right so uh fine so i'm going to go here uh so let me let me go back now let let us go back to the with the lectures out there because you know we just we'll also try to complete some topics you know or else it will uh okay let me so okay <clears throat> very quickly let me resume so this is good this is good that we have generated the token things are nice out here but where is my home control secured this home control has to be secured right if you see still now the token is generated by this security api out there but this is still like moving 
it's, it's still like open it is still like free air out here right so what do we do for that right so for that you know we need to use something called as the middleware again i would repeat if you're new to mbc core please go and uh, go through the videos of mbc core but let me tell you what exactly is this middleware out here so you have this uh, security you have this uh, controller out here the home controller which you want to make it secure you have this security controller out here which generates the token right so first the client sends a message to him uh, the username and password and he generates the token now the next time when he comes here right he will come with the token so what you can do is that you can execute security middlewares in between jwt middlewares in between and the goal of the jwt middlewares is only one thing to check that if the token is valid or not right so we need to plug in the jwt middleware into the request pipeline right so when he comes with the token he will be checked out here he will be checked that this token is valid or not right if it is invalid then he will give back that uh, uh, what is that 401 I, i don't remember 401 unauthorized and if it is okay he will say 200 okay or whatever right so basically <clears throat> we will need to plug in this middleware now to plug in anything into inside mvc core we need to go and write that code in the startup.cs method oh, remind me later so we need to go and write that code into the startup.cs method so in the startup.cs method we will go out here so guys i'm doing the second part of it the second part is to go and now the token is generated given to the client but the client should be checked as well right so for that you know what we need to do is in the startup.cs file we need to go and say this is how you add a middleware so we will say out here services dot add authentication add authentication and check the authentication with this key you can see i am using the same key let me go and plug this add authentication in our project so in the services in the startup.cs in the services dot add startup.cs in the services dot add so over here i will go and i will say and this code you have to write after the add controller with views out here please note that the sequence is important so what i'm doing here i'm saying that this middleware the way you add a middleware services dot add that's how you add a middleware out here so i'm added a middleware out here and and again like this middleware is a ready made middleware which comes from jwt token uh, nugget right so i'm going to go and use this and uh, this namespace is also needed this so i'm just just making sure that the namespaces are all at place right so there it is so if you see this this middleware what it does is it it will keep checking that is valid token coming to the website or not if the valid token is coming coming to the website it will allow that request to go 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 in or it will not allow that request to go in, right now one is that you have to say here services dot add authentication but also you have to say that add dot use authorization remember the way to add a way to add things here in if you look at dot net core you say add and then you say configure so there are two methods out here in case if you have not done mbc core services dot add services dot use or app dot use i'm sorry you know so here i have to go now and after the authorization right uh, i would like to go uh, and put authentication i'm sorry authentic authorization is there we have to put authentication so authentication comes at the top so app dot use authentication remember authentication means this checks if the user is existing in the database or not authorization means this will check does he have a valid role or not so authentication means is he existing in our system and authorization means does he have access to this button that that navigation bar and so on right so i put things out here uh, but uh, this is not the end of the story we need to do something else out here if you see at this moment we have two security we have two controllers one controller is the security controller and for this security controller i don't want this check to happen i don't want this middleware to fire also i will say rather but i don't want this this security controller he has to access the security controller isn't it he has to get the key but for the home controller i want to go and apply security so what they have done is you know they have given an attribute out here saying that okay you can take this attribute and you can decorate this attribute on controllers on which you want to do the authentication authorization and you can leave those controllers like login controller or security controller or home con or about us controller 
where you say that okay we don't want to do any security on this these are normal pages right so for that you know what we need to do is we need to go to the api or whatever is your controller and we need to decorate at the top authorize authorize so for example at this moment on the security controller i will not put anything but on the home controller i will go and i will put authorize out here right so that it is so now with this what will happen is uh when i go and run this uh website out here it will try to hit the home controller and because you know i don't have a token this will not work right so i'm going to go and just do an fi out here any questions guys please put down on the chat uh and just very quickly you know before you know until this application runs we have these kind of trainings inside quest pond so like every tuesday we have the architecture training then we have thursday and friday this is happening every 9 pm we have the mbc core angular training which is going for 15 days and then we have the azure training you know this week uh, we were not able to do it but next week we'll again begin az204 so inside quest pond you know we have this regular training that is happening so there it is guys you can see now it is not saying 404 exception please understand it is saying 401 unauthorized exception please understand so that is good that means our code is working that means our code is working right so fine so guys any questions here you know we will go and we will see how to invoke the home controller uh, let me go back to the questions out there let us see that if you have questions so uh, let me interact with you guys let us see that somebody is able to not follow something okay should we encrypt the claim so very good question from uh, shiv kumar yadav out there uh, should we encrypt the claims no you don't have to do anything shiv kumar i think it's a very uh, uh, a good uh, question out there do we need to encrypt anything no we don't need to encrypt anything that is already happening as a part of uh, the thing so let me just explain you if you remember i had put somewhere the token where did my token go off so let me go and generate the token out here uh, so let's let's generate the token uh, slash api there's a question out here sir do we need to do any encryption nothing that's all done you don't have to do anything you have to just plug it inside the pipeline right now very quickly i know i think i missed this part i was supposed to explain this and i just went ahead with the demo and that's why that question has come in this complete token is divided into three sections so you can see here that that's the first one that's the second one so there is a dot out here there's a second one out here there's again a dot right this first information is where this information has what kind of algorithm you are using like are you using hmac or uh, and so on right so this this first one has the algorithm you know what you use right this second thing out here you know has the claims so this is the payload people term this as a payload which has the claims you know saying that okay like at, if you see at this moment we have said admin equal to true and something email address right so this has the claims this third one out here you know you can see it you can see this value sum also out here right this what this does is you know this has all these two things at the top right plus it has the key so the the it has the payload plus the algorithm and plus the token which is generated so all hashed and encrypted and put into this so you can see that the whole key carries everything about you it carries the key it carries the algorithm it carries the payload and so on right so you take this key you can go anywhere and people can if if they understand this key you know they can understand what you are so we don't have to do any kind of encryption everything is by default encrypted and it and on the top if you just put ssl out there right uh, it's uh, uh, it's more secure right so just answering the question you know which uh, which is there sir can we use the ip to generate the token absolutely ashish you can go whatever you put inside the claims if you want really you can put inside the claims or you can just make a look at the way i have used username as be you can put append something like ip address and you can do it yeah but just use the username believe me it is secure ashish it is secure you don't have to really go abroad about you know thinking that it is insecure just it is secure so so don't worry about you know that somebody will get a, get access to the token as i have said that session hijacking does happen session hijacking to avoid session hijacking there are different techniques for it but as such even if somebody is able to get your token and if you have expired your token that token is of no use right so in what extent the identity checks the security process so so question from sagar here it checks in lot of things it 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 has it checks you know for the whole sum it checks for the whole data it checks you know for the tampering uh, it also checks the token as well right so if you look at it that's a good question and let me just talk about it here that 
what are the different kind of checks it can do? It can do and not do depending on what you what you select. You know, so for example, if you see here, uh, what are the different checks it can do? So basically, if you go and if you see the services dot add authentication out here, you can see here he checks for the issuer. Are the issuer same? He checks for the audience. You know, for whom you have issued this the, this one, right? It checks for the sign-in key. It checks for everything. So you can see, and you can bypass these checks. For example, sometimes we'll say that, okay, like let's for this controller, we don't need to check, you know, if the key is there or not, but we need to check that at least he is coming from my token, from my domain originated token, right? So you can literally go and, and uh, you know, control, you know, what you want to check or what you don't want to check, right? Okay, let me go back to questions out here. Can anyone decrypt the token and show claims? Yes, uh, so Amit, the person who can decrypt the token is only the server because he only has the key. Who can decrypt the message? The person who has the key and you have the key. So just decrypt it uh, by using the same. Right. So, uh, right. So I can see, let me see if there are any more questions out here. Right. So if the token expire, what we will do, if the token expires, Pankaj, it will check automatically. If the token has expired, the JWT authorization check will get will have an exception. So we don't have to worry about it. Will it check for role? No, the role check is up to you. It will not check that you can enable this button or disable this button and so on. Remember authorization code, you do in anywhere, in any framework, it is custom. This button should be shown depending on admin, this button should be shown depending on accountant. Nothing can be automated in that sense, right? So now, uh, okay, let me go ahead and continue with my demo out here. So let us let us continue with the demo. So what has happened till now? So till now, yes, we try to hit this, this thing out here and it gave out this security exception. But now I want to see this because like, let's say now I'll say, okay, like I will generate a token. So let's go and generate a token by using this API slash security. So this is my token. So I would like to go and take this token and put it here somewhere and say that give me access to the home controller, right? So what you can do is to, so to give the token, you need to follow HTML JWT bearer, or I'll say the World Wide Web HTTP JWT bearer protocol, right? Bearer, bearer means the person who carries the token, the person who carries things like we say, right? We bear sorrow for our whole life, right? So, so the bearer, right? So here, this is how it is. So we will hit the security controller. We will get the token, right? Now, when you send this token to, to this middleware, you know, with checks, right? So you have to send in a certain format. The format is first, the, it has to be sent through the HTTP header and the header is very standard header, authorize, authorize, authorize or authorization, I don't remember. I think authorize, colon, uh, bearer, all exactly same, huh? authorize, colon, bearer, and then your token, what you have. And it will just allow you to go, right? So let us do that. So what I'm going to do is now, now remember at this moment, I don't have any client. So what I will do is I'm going to go and use this notorious uh, extension out here, uh, which is, which modifies the headers. If you see here, I've installed a Chrome extension. What this Chrome extension does is this Chrome extension takes your header and modifies it. So for example, I want to add an authorization header, right? So I can go here, I can, I can say plus, and I'll say in the request header, I want to go and put in into this authorization now, these are all ready-made headers out here. I will say bearer and that token, this token, which is generated. Remember, the token has to be generated for the same session. Do not generate the token in a Cognito browser and try to use it here. It will not work. The JWT token is session specific, right? So you can see here, I've added the token. I've cut pasted it. The structure is there. Authorization space, colon, bearer, right, and all. And now let me try to hit it. Right. You can see, I can see my home page. So once I start giving him a token, if I try to give a wrong token here, let me try to do this. Let me try to go and make this ESF. Look at this. I made a small mistake. I made a small mistake in that headers out here and select boom. Not allowed. Right. So this is what that bearer is. This bearer means this is a structure given by the, uh, by the, by the HTTP protocol committee saying that, when you pass a token in a standard way, this is the way it is, right? So if you go and if you search for uh, what do you call uh, JWT bearer structure, right? Or something, 
right? If you if you see this, or I not the JWT bearer structure, but uh, the bearer token structure, right? If you search for this, you would find. Uh, what should I search? You know, I didn't search properly. <laughs> so authorization bearer. If you search for this, this they name it as authorization bearer. So authorization bearer token, uh, HTTP request. Oh gosh, you know, a good programmer has to be a good uh, Googler, right? So there it is. You can see authorization. So must be this is ah. Uh, Okay, let me let me do like this. Let me show it right away here. You know, you can try to Google it, but if you see here in the function F12, let me show it here. This is a good place to show it. So if, if I make a network call out here, you can see in the network, so in the get call. So that is the get local host call out here. And if you see out here in the request header, very quickly, you can see in the request header, uh, if you see down below, down below i'm going to highlight it that request is going out there you can see down i've just tracked the request so look at this look at the way structure is authorization i'm sorry i written authorized i don't remember so look at the first thing is this is all like your your web api web standards right accept language encoding so authorization is a standard right and then say bearer give a space after this the semicolon is all there as a part of the request and then give the key, right? So this is how you pass. That's why people say JWT bearer, because this is the person who bears that token, takes it to the server, right? And on the server, we have this friend of ours, you know, which checks like, so if on the server side, we have this check of this middleware, which will check saying that, okay, if you pass me exactly like authentication and bearer, I will just check, you know, with this key, if the token is right or not, right? So, um, so that was, you know, a, a, what you call a basic understanding of how to use JWT token, how to, what is JWT bearer, right? So any questions here? <clears throat> any queries? Let me know. I'm not sure if... Uh... So, uh, so basically, what will happen? Will the token, if the user logs off, the, definitely the token is gone, Anand, right? So uh, for some reason, guys, I have my so right so I, my chat has gone off i'm not sure my chat is disconnected uh, let me just see if i can okay so let me i've just refreshed it you know uh, what happened my chat has gone off my chat has gone off so my chat has gone off now the only way i can chat with you guys is uh, through our question support so uh, question support please help me because my chat has been gone off so i'm going to go and just take the questions out here Please visit my website, questpond.com, and questions are all here. What happened if the user logs out? Yeah, so if the user logs out uh, and you close the browser, everything is gone. Uh, remember, as I've said, it is per session or per user, you know, that token is generated, right? So we don't need to worry about it. Uh, let's look at other questions. So, right. Uh, right, so can you please explain the difference between JWT and bearer? So uh, as I've already explained, JWT is the token. JWT is the token. And bearer is that structure. Bearer is that structure. Remember where I've said authorization. That is given by the by the web team, the, the web committee, the worldwide web committee who made HTTP. They have said that if, if Java person wants to pass a data to an authorization thing to a .NET guy, a .NET person wants to pass it to someone else, a JavaScript wants to pass, then this is the structure for you. The structure is authorization, colon, bearer and this so that's why you know jwt this this the this structure is very common across everything right for example you would be surprised uh you know i, I, I actually i'll tell you what is happening out here very quickly this is my share screen out here i would like to show you something if you see at this moment you know i have the access to my youtube channel i do have access to my youtube channel right and i was not able to read your messages look at this when i go to my youtube out here and when I was trying to log in, right? If if I if I try to log in out here, it won't work at this moment. You can see it is not working because you know this damn this JWT. <laughs> I have put a JWT out here, so you can see that how standard it is. Even Google, 
or all the big websites use that. So for example, look at this, because this is come, this, this is, this is the token of my local host, right? And I'm sending it to YouTube and you say, Hey, like, what is this? Like, where is your bearer token, right? Which is generated. If I delete this, look at this. If I delete this tampering and if I do a refresh out there, you can see my YouTube should work. So if I now try to sign in, so you can see now, so there it is. I'm, I'm signed in as Questbound out there, right? And, and all that. So the, the point, what I'm, what I'm trying to make out here is that, uh, this is, so this is a Questbound account out there, I'm sorry. That it is so standard that it is used by everyone out there. So you can see that, yeah, like, I was just wondering why I was not just able to see your chat, you know, because yeah, you know, I've changed my token out there, right? Okay. Uh, Right, so after the token expire, the user will be redirected to the uh, token expiration, will be get extended. So uh, this again, for this, you need to write a logic. If you say that, no, like after the token expired, you want to reinitiate the token, then you need to write a logic for it. It is not automatically out there. Okay, okay, guys, thank you very much. I think we are almost at the end of the show out here. I know that there are a lot of questions coming in. I'll take one more last question. Uh, okay, thank you, Ashish. So that's a good compliment for me that like tomorrow you have an interview with the manager. So this, this should really help you out, right? Uh, so very quickly, you know, uh, you know this, uh, we try to log in every Sunday, my Questpoint team logs in, right? I would suggest everyone out there that please go ahead, you know, share this video somewhere on your LinkedIn, somewhere or in Facebook, right? Please let, let, know, let other people know about it. And very quickly inside Questpoint, you know, we are having more advanced lecture than this. This what you're showing this in this lecture is like, basic one this is like okay okay lecture right uh, but like you know in the coming thursday you saw today like how to generate the token but in the coming sunday we'll we'll see that how we can use angular and integrate with jwt token remember that today i did not create any ui but as soon as you say you want to create an angular ui or you want to create a javascript ui and do things then you need to do handshaking right so that's what i'm going to take this coming thursday so very quickly wednesday we have the architecture training which is happening then we have Thursday and Friday, uh, or Thursday and Friday depends on huh? the Angular and MVC code training, what we do, we are, we are, we are continuing with that. And uh, definitely on Saturday, we are doing the AZ204 and we are planning for new sessions as well. So full week, we have like nine to 10 India PM time, you know, we have this training going on one hour, one hour, only one hour. If you do it like in one or two days, you will see your knowledge just multiply, right? Thank you very much, everyone. Thanks a lot to come to this session. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Happy learning.